Hey folks, welcome back to Oracle of Seasons. Uh, this next segment, uh, at least the first part of it, is entirely down tilt lock. So I apologize if I have to do any editing or commentary runs dry, but essentially, although I haven't shown off the reason yet why, um, you have to dig until you find a certain item, and that certain item is in a randomly generated location anywhere on this beach. So, as you can imagine, the only interesting thing are these little fire potobo chain things, I don't know. Which are irritating, don't get under the heads, go, go from a different angle. And, yep, that takes care of that. So, we keep digging. And I'm sure you're all in suspense, oh my god, what is he digging for? He's finding a bunch of rocks, isn't it great? Yeah, if I haven't mentioned it before, I know I have, actually, but, um... These rocks are essentially the Cerosian equivalent to rupees. They use different currency because, you know, they're different places and all. These are called ore chunks, and they hold a lot less... You just don't use them as much as rupees, because Cerosians also like to trade using, like, seeds and whatnot. And there's what we're looking for. Star-shaped ore. Now, the star-shaped ore uh, is one of them special items that you use to buy stuff at the market, for a reason which will become ever apparent in a matter of probably about a minute. You gotta buy this bow right here. You'll probably recognize this bow, because it's very similar to the one that Rosa wore when she helped us find the Subrosian world the first time. Also, come back here, you can get a bomb expansion. So useful. Changes from 10 to 30 bombs. It's a lot. And also, this heart piece is really easy to afford, but again, I'm not getting it. I think we'll actually get those hearts, though. How much do they cost? Sure, why not? So yeah, now that we have the bow, uh, very similar to Rosa's bow, who do you think we're gonna bring it to? That's right, Rosa. I'm sure that was... Very old stretch. If you were playing through the game normally, you'd be wandering around and talking to everybody, and then you'd realize, hey, she looks really stupid. And you'd figure out what's wrong, and blah blah blah. But I just wanted to skip the middleman. So now we're on a date with a creepy robed goth girl, or something. Also, I, I, I wonder what they look like under their hoods. Sabrosians, not goths. Goths, I know, they're ugly. Don't want to see that. Anyways, uh, Rosa has a key that opens all Subrosian doors, the very few that there are. And one of those doors, which needs to be unlocked, is a door at the Temple of the Seasons. So now that we have her kind of tagging along, we can open that door and get another Season Power. Also, avoid lava. Rather dangerous. Now, if I recall, it's up to the northwest corner. Huh. I'm right. Summer in the northwest. You're right. Like that ever happened. And is this supposed to be a maze of sorts? Maybe I've just done it so many times I've memorized it, but holy crap, that is really easy. And even though the color scheme might make you think that it's fall, uh, this is actually the Summer Palace. And now we got the Summer! Hooray! I wouldn't say it's as useful as the, uh, Winter, since... Really, it's, it's a bunch of gimmick areas. Oh, God damn it. Like, winter, you freeze water, and that's useful in a hell of a lot of places, even if not necessarily for puzzles. Summer, pretty much getting up to areas specifically designed for that, so. So, it's a hell of a lot better than the fall, though. The fall sucks. I, I, like, I really like fall as a season, but it's really pretty useless in this game. But we'll show that off once we get it. 
Also, if I feel, uh, seem a little bit, uh, less than energetic, uh, it's probably because I was just at, uh, Lyco's birthday party, and we essentially did a repeat of what they did at, uh, my party. Stay up till 5 a.m. and then not get enough sleep. But that wraps up our date. We're heading out. Hey, Ricky stuck around. Hooray. What a nice guy. Let's head back this way. There is another path, but uh, Ricky can't actually traverse it. You generally traverse that path if you had either of the two other pets. Let's head up here. Now it's essentially uh, a case of getting back to that stump. Now that we have summer, we can activate it, get some vines up to lead up that col uh, cave in the middle of the cliff, and blah blah blah. And this is sort of... A, I don't want to say a crash course, that implies something amazing, but... Um, an instruction on how to switch multiple seasons. It basically goes chronologically. You swing it once for winter, or whatever comes next, and then swing it again for the next one online. And that's the uh, third dungeon right up there, the Poison Moth's Lair. And I guess we'll be heading there fairly soon. And uh, before I go in, I'd just like to say, Star Trek was pretty damn awesome. See you guys next time.